author Dan Hine thinks it's about time ordinary people reclaim their media, governments and democracies. And he lays out his revolutionary recycling plans in his latest book. Yes, he dropped by recently to talk about the return of the public, which is the title of his new book. I mean, the idea of the book is really to try and put media reform at the heart of a, a, a more general program of political reform. The argument in the book is to say that we live nominally in a democracy where public opinion is sovereign. Public opinion determines what happens. But public opinion itself is subject to all manner of more or less secret or unaccountable pressures. And you can argue, as I do in the book, that public opinion has been largely privatised in, in key areas. And I talk in some detail about the run-up to the financial crisis and the run-up to the invasion of Iraq. And I show how, in different ways, what most people understood in, in key publics, if you like, and key populations, the American population in the case of Iraq, and, and the, the global population, really, in the case of the financial crisis. People ha did not have secure access to a factual account of the world. There was a real problem in what people thought was going on. And unless we change the mechanics of news production, as we change the, the, the way in which journalism is controlled, we're going to continue to be misled or, or misinformed. And people around the world watching this will be saying, but the British and American governments are always telling other governments that their media is uh, corrupt. That's right. And there's a sense in which the current plural liberal model of media that the British and the Americans support and, and seek to impose on other countries is, in a sense, part of their communication strategy. They can turn around to the rest of the world and say, look at our wonderful plural media where all, all manner of different opinions are allowed to, to find expression. But actually, what you find is a great deal of subtlety is exercised, but you still find, as I say, effective takeover of key areas, peace and war, and the, the, the conduct of, of economic management, for example, where it's very difficult to establish an alternative account. Of course, the print media is in decline now. I don't know if that's because of the advancement in the electronic media, or readers are just becoming very jaded and they don't trust their news source anymore. Well, I think, there's a, I think those, those two, two, two processes are at work. Uh, there was a time when if you wanted to know what was going on in the world, you had to rely on print media. That has been undermined by the arrival of new technology. There's a real bad faith at work in the way that the media says, oh, we're only giving the public what they want, once we've excluded everything that we can't talk about for whatever reason. And part of the problem with, with talking about media reform is that the media don't want to admit that they don't have the resources or the capability uh, or the institutional interest in looking at areas of key concern. So if you want to understand the global economy, you need to understand the offshore system. Now, no newspaper is going to turn around and say, you know what, we don't understand it. It's too big, it's too complicated, it's too technical. We'd need 50 or 60 forensic accountants working flat out in order to understand how our own media owners, as to say, how, how the people who own the conglomerates I work for, avoid taxes. I'd like to see that admission on a big headline. You must be used to this criticism. It's one made since uh, the invention of printing. Your book uh, surely could have been written ever since the invention of printing. There's always been criticism of this kind against institutional structures that control media. There have, yeah, there have. What I think has changed is that in recent years, the, the failures of the system that we have, the failures of the, uh, the, the free market model, if you like, or the free market model tempered with public service values that we have in Britain, the failures of that model have become so glaring that it's, I think, very difficult for people to, to continue to, to believe that everything's more or less okay. You know, when you have a situation that f for a decade, the media are ignoring the fact that the banking system is building up major systemic problems that, that will eventually be paid for by taxpayers in the form of, uh, as it turns out, cuts in benefits and so on. If you have such a massive failure of communication, such a massive failure of description, the time is surely right to start thinking about another way of doing things. Well, Dan Hine, thank you very much for coming on board to share this with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you.